reading more Ranger in Time Journey Through Ash and Smoke. And so, guys, let's get started with Chapter 4. Oh. Get to that chapter. Okay. Chapter 4. Swept away. Water poured into the cave as Helga climbs out the creek that usually wandered through the nearby hills in gentle cascades filled over its banks streaming toward them in a frothy rush. Helga sucked in her breath and had seen storms like this before. Soon the whole low area would be flooded. She needed to get home. But which way was home? Ranger Paws slipped on a wet rock as he climbed up beside her. Helga put a hand on his matted head and looked down at him with bright eyes, scared eyes. The skin on Ranger's neck prickled. The smell of air was changing by the seconds. It, it was wetter, strong with the scent of crumbling rocks and plants torn up by the waves of water raging down on the hills. Helga needed shelter and Ranger knew where that was. Back at the stone and dirt building with the woman who had called for her. Ranger trotted away from Helga and circled sniffing the air and rocks until he picked up the path he'd taken to her. There, Ranger caught his own scent and recognized the smell of some mossy plants near the sharp rocks. This way was the way he had come from his he before. He barked and ran a few steps along the scent trail, but Helga didn't follow. Ranger splashed back and Helga jumped and jumped on Helga with his paws, pushing her in the right direction. Helga stumbled and looked down at him. Water swirled around her ankles. Ranger barked and stared, tracking the old scent trail again. Finally, Helga followed him through the rocks. Through the rocks. It was slippery. Ranger did his best to plant his paws as he crossed the creek. He braced himself against rushing water that threatened to sweep him away as Ranger was climbing out of the water be between t two pointed rocks. Helga slipped and fell backward as she flailed at the rocks but couldn't hold on. The water swept her along as if she weighed no more than one of Sadie's dolls. Ranger jumped into the churning flood. The water was too strong. He couldn't keep his paws on the ch on the creek bottom, so he paddled against the current, struggling to keep his he head above water. Where was the Helga girl? The raging water slammed Helga into a cluster of rocks. She cried out in pain, but when her feet found solid ground, ground she was stra strange, strangely thankful for the sharp rock that had gooched her in the cheek. Without it, the flood might have washed her clear out to sea. Helga clung to the rock and scrambled to stand. She caught a glimpse of the golden dog paddling against the currents. She held tightly to a, to a corner of rock with one hand with the other. She reached out and grabbed a thick handful of wet fur. Ranger! Ranger! yelped. I'm sorry, said the girl. She pulled out, she pulled Ranger to her, let go of her, his fur, and gripped the collar around his neck. I didn't want you to be carried off with water still swirling around her knees. Helga took a careful step. She kept one hand on the rocks and the other and the other on ranger's collar she pushed through the water and rock to rock to rock in what she hoped was the directions of home 
Ranger looked up at the girl. She had a cut below one eye. Blood trickled down her cheek, but she hardly seemed to notice. She stared. She started out going the right way, so Ranger went along when she pulled him gently by his collar. But when she pulled him gently by his collar, but then she tugged him off to the left. That wasn't where he'd come from. Ranger tugged back and barked Helga. Barked. Helga stopped and looked down at him. Then she looked around and set off in his direction. Soon the rain eased and the water slowed, then sloshed through puddles until Helga spotted the lake with its family's shoreline. She let go of the dog and started to run. Ranger was happy to be out of the deep, fast water. He splashed al along Helga all the way back to the strange, earthy house. The woman was outside, still holding the scarf thing. Now there was a man, too, standing beside a, a brown and white horse. Father, Helga shouted as she raced up to him. You found Rasta. Never mind, Rasta, he said. I'm thankful to have found you. He looked down at Ranger. What's this? This dog is the one who found me, she said, scratching Ranger behind his ear. He tipped his head and leaned into her strong hands. I took, sh I took shelter in one of the caves, and Helga stopped talking when she noticed blood on her father's hands. Are you hurt? What? Her father seemed confused. Then he looked down at his palms. Oh, no. Oh, no. I had to kill a fox. That was after the hens. I must go take care of the meat. He looked at Helga's mud-soaked dress. Dress, and you'd better clean yourself up before our evening meal. Yes, father. Helga's parents went inside the longhouse, but she stayed outside. She patted Ranger on his matted fur and let her hand rest on the metal box he wore around his neck. She had she hadn't seen it before in her in the chaos of the storm what's that you have she eased she eased the box from around ranger's neck and fiddled with the claps until it opened bandages and things she looked at ranger and said i've put this i'll put this inside ranger followed helga into the log house where she tucked Ranger's first aid kit under one of the sleeping benches. Then she knelt down so she and Ranger were nose to soggy nose. Thank you for helping me find my way home, Helga said. You can have some food and sleep by my bench tonight if you'd like. But first, she sniffed his wet fur. You must have a bath. Chapter 5 Bath time! The hot spring wasn't far away, just up into the hills a bit. Not that the rain had stopped, it wasn't a bad walk. It wa Now that the rain had stopped, it wasn't a bad walk, but Helga was still cold. She led Ranger along the well-worn path until she saw steam rising against the dark hills. Ranger sniffed the misty air amid and the mud and plants he caught the old scent trails of many people and animals who had come this way there was another smell too a hot sour scent like when louis and sadie's mom boiled eggs long on the stove look helga said as they creased crusted a hill a girl about Helga's age and two younger boys sat in the steam pool or water nestled in the boulders below. Thora and Ozur and Bercy are here. They are my cousins. Helga waved and raced down the hill with Ra Ranger at her side. Whose shaggy hound is that? Ozur asked as Helga sat down at the flat rock. Flat rock. I'm not certain, Helga said. She pulled off her dripping shoes and, and wiggled her toes. 
but he seems to have adopted me. We are both in need, in need of a bath. You look as if you, you've you had a horrible start of to the day, Tora, Tora said, skimming her hands over the surface of the hot water. We sent searching f for Rasta after we ran off this morning, Ranger Helga said as she changed out of her rain-soaked dress and spread it over. A bush near the pool. We were out in a storm and caught in a swooly creek. Swollen creek. You're lucky, Bercy said, bobbing in the warm water. Father says it's easy to be swept away when it rains so much. He's right, but I'm safe. Now just a bit chilled. Helga looked up as the sun peeked through the clouds. She hoped her things would dry before she had to put them back on. She dipped a foot into the steaming water, then eased herself the, re the rest of the way in. And sat down and leaned against against a mossy rock. She bre breathed in the humid air, closed her eyes, and let the water warm her from the outside. And did you find your horse? Dora asked. He we did, Helga said. While she told Dora the rest of the story, Ranger stepped up to the edge of the hot rocky pool. It was strangest little it was the strangest little pond he'd ever seen. Ranger played around the lake at the park with Luke with at the park with Luke sometimes, but the water was cold and fresh and weedy. This water seemed more like a bath, but with that odd eggy smell and a rocky sandy bottom at his at least his paws wouldn't slide all over like they did in the tub at home, Ranger crouched and poked one foot into the hot water. It stung the pot and that he'd scratched on the rocks earlier. Ranger pulled his foot back and whined. Helga opened his eyes. It's all right, dog, she said. The water's nice and warm. She splashed a little water at Ranger. Thor's little brother began splashing too. Ranger backed away. Leave him be, Helga said. He'll decide when he when to come in. Ranger remembered how good the warm bath water felt at home. Once he was in, he dipped his pot in the water and leaned forward just a bit. Then he slipped on a rock and slid into the pool with an enormous splash. Helga and her cousin Slash laughed. I suppose that that's fair, dog, Helga said, wiping water from her face. We did splash you first. Ranger sloshed over beside her and sat down. The water was hot, but not too hot to feel good. Helga just stared, scratching behind his ear. When something rustled in the bushes, Ranger's ear pricked up. He sat taller, sniffed the air, and caught a doggy smell. That wasn't his own. Wasn't that, Helga said, leaning over to look, a mouse in the bushes, said one of the boys. It's too big for a mouse, Dora said. The bush rustled again. Then a small black nose po poked out. Oh! Helga glided through the water to the edge of the pool and reached her hands toward the nose. She made a qu quiet clicking noises with her tongue. Come on out, it's all right. The nose poked out some more and behind it came a tiny fur ball that reminded Ranger of Zeeshan and, Nor and Noren's, Noreen's puppy. It's a fox pup, Helga whispered as it crept to the edge of the pool and sniffed her fingers. The pup was fluffy gray and white, with the ears and paws too big for the rest of its body. Its curious green gold eyes darted from the children to Ranger and back again. The pup left Helga and circled and circled the pool, sniffing each child's hand, and all the rocky edges and patches of sand when an in 
insects fluttered in a patch of grass. The fox pup crouched low, pawing at pawing the ground. It was still for a moment. Then its leg mus- muscles twitched and it pounced. But the pup misjudged and soaked right over whatever bug was in the grass. He landed on crumbly loose rocks at the edge of the pool and skidded into the water. Splash! Splash! Helga and her cousins laughed, and Ranger sensed the pup's panic. As it kicked in the hot water, Ranger slashed across the pool, lowered his nose, and nudged the little fox back onto the land. Onto land. The pup shook itself, sprang Ranger and everything else. Then it rolled in the dirt a few times and pounced back into the pool. This time, Ranger left it in the water and let it kick. It turns out The fox could swim just fine. The pup paddled over to Helga, who scooped it up, kissed its nose, and said, Where's your mother, little one? Then her face fell. Oh, no. What's wrong? Thor asked. Father said this morning that he had to kill a fox that was after the hens. Helga's heart sank. I fear it was his this pup's mother. While Tora helped her brothers get dressed, Helga set the fox pup down on shore. It stayed close to her while she put on her clothes, sniffing and pawing at the rocks. When Helga sat to put her shoes on, the fox stretched out beside her and yawned. Ranger climbed out of the hot pool, shook herself himself off the off and lay down by a rock. The sun was finally out. And it felt good. Helga wandered all around the bushes and rocks near the hot pool with the fox pup prancing at her heels. Finally, she scooped the little fox up in her arms and sighed. I'm sorry, she whispered, hugging it close to her damp dress. There's no sign of your mother here, but you can go home with us. She looked She looked over at Ranger She and added, You'll have a friend to play with. Helga put the pup down. It trotted over to Ranger and pounced on his front paws. Ranger moved his paw out of the way and the pup pounced again. Then it licked Ranger's nose. I don't think your father will be pleased, Dora said. Father's the only reason the pup needs our help, Helga said. But I'm sure you're right. She looked down at the tiny fox and sighed we'll have to keep you for you a secret now for now helga said father doesn't care for foxes dora and her brothers stared started toward their own long house over the hills shall we hunt eggs at the cliffs tomorrow dora called back to helga yes helga said we can meet there when the sun comes up she looks down at Ranger, the tiny fox, and the tiny fox. Let's go home, friends. The pup raced in, in a circle ra- around Ranger. Sw- Ranger swept his, at his tail a few times and trotted off after Ray Helga. Ranger didn't think he cared for, the fo- for foxes either. He ignored the pup. And walked beside Helga, headed, heading for the earthen house with the smoke curling up from the roof. Hopefully, he'd be able to finish his work here soon and go home. Chapter 6. Tiny Trouble Delicious smells drifted out of the longhouse. Then they returned and Helga pulled open the door. Roasting meat and warm, earthy plant scents, Ranger lifted his nose and breathed in, but the deep, sharp voices spilled out the door along with, a wonder- along with the wonderful smells. Helga caught a glimpse of Ingar Olafsson and guessed he'd come to argue with the farm boundaries again. Farmer would be in a sore mood. All night, Helga dropped her cloak off 
over the fox pup. She carried step by step and called Ranger by his collar until the door swung shut and they were outside again. And they were outside again. Um, again. Father has a visitor and it does not seem to be going well. Helga whispered to Ranger. She crouched be behind the rubbish pile and pulled him by the collar to join her. We'll have to wait here. Ranger sat down and waited for Helga. He didn't understand what she was saying to him, but she he understood that sometimes people just needed to talk. Luke did, did that most often when he was worried or scared. Helga seemed that way now. Ranger could feel her heart pounding through her dress. The fox pup tried to wiggle away from Helga, but she held it tight. What shall we call you, little one? He said. How about funny or foony? I think that suits you well. Funny was the word of fire, so it's foony, I guess. And this pup's eyes always held a spark or two. Finally, the longhouse door opened. Ignar Oliphason stormed out, stomped to his house horse, and rode away with a scowl on his face. Helga's father was upset too. His loud voice carried through the turf walls as he spoke to her mother. Helga waited until it was quiet. Then she arranged some rocks in bones from the rubbish pile to make a small shelter for the fox pup. You'll have to stay here for for now, funny or I mean Foony, she said, and turned out the do for the door. Foony jumped up into the rocks, tumbled over the wobbly fence Helga had built, and pounced on her sh shoe. Helga s sighed, put the pup back in piled the wall higher. Then she turned to Ranger and pointed to the ground near the pup's homemade cage. Wait here, I'll be back. I I promise she pointed I promise she pointed again and Ranger sat down. He stood guard while Helga went inside. Foony got up on his hind legs and tried to climb out. Ranger gently pawed him back down. Foony yipped. Ranger sat with his back to the pup, blocking the way out of the little pen. The fox pup climbed up and, sw and swiped at Ranger with a paw. Tiny claws scratched Ranger's back, but he stayed put. If this was the job he had to do, he had to do go. He had to do to go home to Luke. He'd do it. But Ranger hoped he'd be done soon. Finally, Helga came back carrying two stew-covered bones, but gave the big one to Ranger and dropped the smaller one to Foonie's pen. The pup pounced on the bone and lapped up the greasy stew that covered it. Ranger lay down with his bone between his paws and began chewing on the end. Helga tucked her dress around her legs and sat beside him petting his head. You'll need to stay here tonight, she said. But tomorrow, father's leaving, so you'll be able to come inside. And then, she wasn't sure what would happen. Then, father had been packing when she went inside the longhouse. He was leaving in the morning for Thingvillar, where the island people gathered to make lawns, laws and settle this pictures disputes like the one her father and Igar Alfasen were having over the borders of their barley fields. Helga had never been to Thingvillar but she'd heard stories from their local chieftain he joined the island's other leaders there for the old thing, a two-week assembly each summer. 
there the law speaker would read the island island's laws from a tall cliff called at the law rock announcements were made about property and other issues that affected the whole island. Anyone with a problem could bring it to the uh, thing to be settled. Helga always wondered what the old thing would be like when she watched their ch chieftain right off each summer. Women were allowed to be chieftains, but had to nominate a man to represent them at out all thing mother always said that's because women had to stay home to run their the farms men couldn't be trusted to do that for two weeks alone with their wives away now mother and helga would need to take care of the farm with help from asa and Gun gunner Mother's belly was very fat with the baby now, so Helga knew she would need to to take on extra work. She didn't mind. She only hoped father's property argument would be settled and he would be happy again when he returns. Helga, her mother called, I am taking care of the rubbish. And and we'll be right there, Helga shouted back. She turned to Ranger and Foony and pointed to the ground. Stay here. I'll be back with breakfast for you in the morning. She and, and she ran into the house. Foony whined and stared climbing and started climbing over the fence, pawing at Ranger's shoulder. Ranger gently pushed the pup down and watched the longhouse door swing shut. Foony yipped again and swatted Ranger's tail. It was going to be a very long night. Chapter 7, guys. So, guys, we're going to end this video right here. And 